and welcome to Mary's Country Kitchen. In today's video, I have six different meals that I've prepared in the last little while for my family. I'm not a gourmet chef. I just enjoy cooking good food that will nourish our bodies and feed us well. And so in doing so, I hope to inspire you to cook up something good in your own kitchens. So first up is a slow cooker roast beef. Then I have a Mexican chicken casserole. After that is spicy orange beef and broccoli stir fry. Following that, Italian puzzin, which is a fun Friday meal that we like to have here. And following that, grilled vegetables with chicken skewers. And don't miss the last one. It is beef kebab with homemade hummus and some roasted potatoes, Greek salad. Everything is delicious and I hope it inspires you to cook up something good. Don't be shy to change recipes up, omit ingredients that you don't prefer or don't have on hand, and yeah, just cook up something good. So tonight I will be making a roast, and so I have this round roast I took out and it's been thawing since yesterday. And so my favorite way to do a roast is in the slow cooker. I haven't done a roast in the oven for a really long time. I just always do it in the slow cooker. It always turns out really nice. Sometimes, you know, I'm not able to slice it. It just falls apart into pieces like a shredded uh, beef, but it's always delicious. First, I'll be browning it on the stove. So I have my pan on the stove heating up with a little bit of butter and a bit of olive oil and I'm really cleaning out the fridge. I don't have too much left in the fridge, so I have this bit of onion that I'm going to put in to help flavor it. I have some mushrooms, a bit of celery, one lonely carrot that I'll add in a little bit later. What I'll do is I'll let the meat cook in the slow cooker for a couple of hours, and then I'll add the potatoes and the carrot. So, so far I just seasoned it with a bit of pepper and garlic powder and I'm just going to put it in my pan. I have my pan on medium to high and I put the butter and olive oil in. So we'll just brown the outside of it before putting it in the slow cooker. my roast is nicely browned. I added it to my slow cooker over the stalks of celery that I have. And then I added a little bit of water to my pan just to scrape up the uh, tasty, flavorful bits and poured that into my slow cooker. So I'll put it on low for two hours and then I will add my potatoes and that one carrot that I have. Okay, so my roast has been in for two hours and it smells really good. And so I went ahead and I got my potatoes and my lonely one carrot uh, ready to put in. So for the potatoes, I pretty much just half them. So, because there's still a few hours for it to cook. So we'll just add these in and I'll put a bit of extra salt and pepper. After another three to four hours in the slow cooker, here's what it looked like. So I got the roast out and I did try to slice it up, but it ended up being all shredded. So I just put it back in with all the juices to get nicely coated. I tasted for salt and felt it needed some more salt, so I added that in. I got me some wines here. 
and for a side I did some frozen green beans and frozen corn and plated it up for everyone to enjoy. Okay, tonight I'm making a chicken Mexican casserole. And so I have some cubed chicken breast that I seasoned with chili powder and a bit of cumin, salt and pepper, and I just baked those in the oven and then cubed them up. I also chopped a little bit of onion that I had left over. I did look at a few recipes online. And so this is what I came up with. Um, I saw one that you needed cream of chicken soup, but I don't have any cream of chicken soup on hand. So I have creamed corn and I also have whole kernel corn that I'm gonna throw in and some diced tomatoes. And then also to give a bit of creaminess, I'm gonna mix a bit of sour cream and salsa together. Put that in. I also have black beans. I have a bit of leftover rice. We're going to start with a layer of chips. Take your chips. I've already greased the pan. Now I'm going to add my cubed chicken. I just have a little bit of rice left over. I'm just gonna put that in doesn't get wasted. Then I've got the black beans. On top of the black beans, I'll add my kernel corn. Then I'm gonna put the cream corn. Now I'm going to mix, oh, it's not sour cream. Let me see if I have sour cream. Phew, I found real sour cream. Macaroni, no thank you. I'm gonna add some salsa to this. I can add the link below of the recipe that I'm sort of following. And instead of the cream of chicken soup, so I put the creamed corn and I'm putting this kind of creamy mixture to substitute for that. Now on top of this, I'm gonna put my diced tomatoes. some diced jalapenos. Now on top of this, I'm going to crush more chips. Actually, I think I'm supposed to put the cheese first. And put it in a 350 degree oven, 25 to 30 minutes. And so when I took it out of the oven, I sprinkled it with some fresh chopped cilantro and some chopped green onions just to garnish the top and give some extra flavor. And so this casserole was really delicious. Anything Mexican at our house is always a hit. The only thing is if you don't want soggy tortilla chips, just skip putting them on the bottom. Another day and another meal to prepare. Tonight I'm making spicy orange beef and broccoli stir fry. I got this idea because I have a lot of oranges in the fridge. These are blood oranges that I got. So I have the oranges that I'm going to juice and zest. I have this round steak in the freezer. So we're going to slice that up. And I have some broccoli, but I didn't think that that was enough to go with the dish. So I have cauliflower and I have carrots. I have garlic and ginger. Oh yes, I'm going to add some onion as well. So 
I'll get onion. Also the recipe that I'm going off of, I'll leave it linked below, but I'm not gonna follow it like 100%, so um, I will have a few substitutions or additions. Cornstarch to help thicken the sauce. I have some crushed chili. Also soy sauce. Um, I took this out. I might use a bit of sesame oil because I think it called for peanut oil, which I don't have. And on Asian dishes, I like to just toast some sesame seeds to add to top it off, as well as some sliced green onion. So first I began by putting my sesame seeds in the oven at 350 for five minutes just to toast them. And then I grated up my orange to get the nice orange zest from it. And I got lots of it. And then I juiced these blood oranges and wow, they were really soft to juice, but I got a lot of juice from them and they don't call them blood oranges for nothing. I mean, this juice is really red. And so I had a lot of the juice and then I got to cutting up the vegetables. So the carrots, the broccoli and the cauliflower and then my onion. And so the veggies were all cut up. And then also I minced up my garlic and my ginger, which adds a lot of flavor. And here I'm just pounding the meat, just trying to tenderize it a little bit. And then I sliced it up. Once it was all sliced, I poured a little bit of the orange juice on it, a tiny bit of olive oil, and kind of massaged that in with my hands, again trying to tenderize it a bit. And that night I decided to do brown rice because we don't often have brown rice. And so I had prepared that. Now I'm just making the sauce, so the orange juice, the soy sauce, and then some cornstarch for thickening. And then a little bit of maple syrup to sweeten it a touch. And then I also added some orange zest to that. And then for my topping, just cutting up my green onion and there's my sesame seeds. I have everything prepped. So instead of the sesame oil just to cook the meat and the veggies, I'm going to use some coconut oil because it does better at high heat. Here I have my brown rice slowly cooking. So once that's halfway done cooking, then I'll start with the stir fry. First, I put in the strips of beef to brown them up. And then once they were browned up, I removed them from the pan and put in the garlic and ginger. Also added my chili flakes at that time and then put in the veggies. I sauteed these until they became soft and then added my sauce in and let it cook a little bit more until the sauce thickened and then added my beef back in. And then we were ready to serve on the brown rice. Now, if I would do it again, I would probably just use regular oranges and not do the blood oranges, but that's what I had on hand. Tonight I'm making Italian puzzin for our family. If you're not familiar with puzzin, it's a French Canadian dish that consists of French fries, beef gravy and cheese curds. Now that's the traditional kind and tonight I'll be making Italian putsin where instead of gravy you make a tomato sauce with some ground beef and you put that on the french fries instead of gravy. So I have everything out here that I'll need. First I'll brown my beef. I have some garlic, some onion and a little bit of carrot that I'll cut up fine to add to my sauce. I've got a little bit of this sauce leftover, spicy red pepper that I'll use, and then another full jar of tomato basil. 
and then I purchased our local cheese curds from St. Albert. They're delicious. And I have McCain French fries. This is a favorite here for us, the spicy ones. Um, but of course, I've done it before with just home fries. You cut up your own potatoes, bake them in the oven. You can do it that way. But this is quicker, so I'm throwing in the fries in the oven tonight and it'll come together very quickly. I'm just going to break up the curd cheese into smaller pieces because we don't particularly like the huge chunks. So I just break it apart with my fingers into more bite-sized pieces. And once my meat was browned, I added in my chopped veggies for the sauce and let that cook up a little bit more. Oh, and that day I made double chocolate banana muffins for dessert. It's a favorite for my boys. This was actually my first YouTube video I did, so you can check that out, double chocolate banana muffins. And there I'm adding my tomato sauce, and then some Italian seasonings, and then I just let that simmer on the stove, and got my french fries into the oven. So for myself tonight, because I'm not going to have the french fries, I'm going to just saute up some vegetables and put the sauce and cheese on that. So for myself, I cut up some zucchini, some yellow pepper, a bit of onion and garlic. And so I'm just going to saute that. The boys are like, mom, you're ruining the poutine. Sometimes I do it with cabbage as well. I really like cooked cabbage with the tomato sauce. I have some fresh parsley I'm going to add to my sauce. All right, tonight for supper, I'm making some chicken skewers and some grilled veggies. So I had some bell peppers, some onion, mushroom, and garlic. I got those chopped up, put them in my baking pan to put on the barbecue, and seasoned with salt, pepper, some oregano, and olive oil. And I gave it a toss, and it was ready to put on the barbecue grill. Then I got my sour cream out. I'm making like a garlic, garlicky sauce for the chicken. And so to my sour cream, I just added some grated garlic cloves and some salt and stirred it up till it was nice and creamy. And then I got my chicken out. I am cutting up my chicken breasts into chunks. They're about an inch and a half to two inches. And cutting them up to put on the skewers. So here I'm just putting some lemon juice on them to help season some garlic powder. You can also put fresh garlic oregano again. I seem to use a lot of oregano. And sea salt. And again, black pepper. I 
also put thyme and a drizzle of olive oil and then give it a nice little massage and put them on to my skewers. Now remember if you are using wooden skewers to soak them beforehand so that they won't burn when you're barbecuing. But I have these nice metal ones that my father-in-law gave to us. And then we barbecue them on our charcoal barbecue. And I just love grilled veggies. The flavor of the smokiness, just delicious. We dipped our chicken in the garlic sauce and I also had some rice on the side. So this evening we are barbecuing kebab. So I have some ground beef here. I had almost two pounds. And then when it thawed out and I came to use it, I was like, that's not gonna be enough for the five of us because um, I know the older ones are gonna have two and maybe even want three. A quick way to thaw out some meat is just put in some cold water. So I took out another one. This is another almost pound package. And so that's just thawing. I already went ahead and chopped some onion finely. Also chopped some garlic finely and put salt and pepper. And so that's what is going to season my meat. And it smells really good, the garlic and the onion. Tasty. And then to top it, I'm going to make some homemade hummus. And so I have a can of chickpeas. We need garlic for that, some lemon juice, and also some olive oil and salt. So I'll make my homemade hummus. I have my food processor here to do that in. And I have nice pita bread that I just picked up today. It's nice and soft and fresh to wrap it in. And then I will slice some onion and chop some parsley to top it with. And I'll be serving this with a Greek salad and roasted potatoes in the oven. So I think this is as smooth as I'm going to get it. My food processor is making a horrible noise. I think it's on its last legs, but anyhow, I'm going to put this into a bowl and put it in the fridge so it's ready for supper. So I'm just mixing my ground beef together with the seasoning and garlic and onion. And just remember when you're mixing your ground beef not to do it too much because the more you work it, it will become a bit tougher. And so then I would just take out a ball of the meat and then shape it into a long cylindrical kebab. It's probably about an inch and a half um, thickness maybe and so some people do put it out onto skewers which you can do if it's easier to hold its shape like that but I just do it like this so I ended up making 11 kebab and so I'll get to making the salad and getting the potatoes prepped and then we'll fire up the barbecue All right, so this is how I usually do my Greek salad. If it's traditionally Greek, I'm not sure, but I chop up tomato, cucumber, sometimes I do green bell pepper, onion, Kalamata olives, some feta cheese, crumbled or cubed, I just had a little bit left. And so I gave that a toss, and then I just season with salt, pepper, oregano, some olive oil and balsamic vinegar, and then a little bit of garlic as well, if you like that. Voila. 
And so the last thing I'm prepping is the sliced onion and chopped parsley that is traditionally served with the kebab on the pita with the hummus. And so I'm just missing sumac spice, which is ironic because we have sumac growing everywhere, but here it is. And again, we're grilling up on our charcoal barbecue and look at that, just mouthwatering. And so I didn't show you, I did the roasted potatoes in the oven. We have the salad and then I'm just preparing the kebab on the pita with the hummus and onions. Absolutely delicious. Go and try it. Let me know in the comments. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed those recipes and it has inspired you to cook up something good this weekend. If you enjoy kitchen videos, please like and subscribe and you won't miss what's happening in Mary's Kitchen. Until then, may God bless you with his love, joy, peace, and good health. Bye.